Type into Google buy to let and you'll get loads of articles like this saying that buy to let is dead. In this video, I'm gonna share with you what property strategy is still working today in this current market. So I'm Harvey Moe Property Investor. I've been investing since 2009 and I've gone through a few cycles. I started off in a recession and gone through to another cycle where the market is challenged. And why is the market challenged? It's because interest rates are a 15 year high at the moment. To be realistic, they've been artificially low for about a decade now. So they're probably sitting at where they sh more likely should be been and where they've been historically over the last period of 100 years. So with interest rates so high, is buy to let working anymore? No, it's not worked for age though. Even with low interest rates, it's not worked in the South. Buy to let is a macro and microeconomic thing. And as I said, I've been into property since 2009 and I've built out what I call an all weather portfolio. And I'm a remote property investor. I live in the South and I invest in the North. And the reason behind that is because buy to let in the South died a long time ago when the, the prices of the properties massively escalated but the rents didn't follow that price. So at the moment, my weather portfolio looks something like this. Large proportion of my portfolio is buy to lets, but they're in the Northeast, so they can handle a rate rise, but also at the moment, because if you look at this chart here, there's more landlords exiting the market than there is actually entering the market. Pressure on the prices going up. So the Northeast has been one of the greatest areas for this because loads of infrastructure is coming into the area and it's probably the last part of the UK that's experienced this infrastructure coming in. But that's a different video for a different day. Have a watch of this video here if you want to see the big wealth transfer into different areas. But my portfolio looks like this. I've got some commercial conversions, some SA, I've got some HMOs and... And the reason behind this is it gives you stability. If my SA is not doing so well, I've got some stability over here. I've got two types of HMOs, which are social housing one, lower income but guaranteed rent, and I've got some higher end professional HMOs like that. And the same with my buy to lets. I've got the different types of buy to lets where I've got the social housing, lower end ones, I've got the more professional ones, to higher turnover, and I've got my stability ones here. It gives me stability in my portfolio. But over the years, I realized there's no one strategy that fits anybody. Buy to lets do work in still micro areas. Uh, again, look at this property here. I bought this property for 56K, rented it for 425 when the rates was around, I was paying around 3%. We've just had the tenant move out and we've rented it back out for 675. So even with the rates going up, the rent has gone up higher than the rates have gone up. So especially if you're new to it, if you've got old stock, it's a bit difficult because raising the rents up 200 pound to a tenant's been in there for like five years, probably is gonna be difficult. But with the new stock, buy to let does work in the right areas. Just make sure you pick the right areas. But how do you pick the right strategy? You have gotta pick the right strategy for you. That old adage where people say to you, if you put your mind to it, you can do anything, or because I've done it, so can you, is absolutely BS. After time, that is just gurus trying to sell you courses, to be honest. Everybody's got different skills. No matter how much I tried, and had the mindset and belief in myself, I would never be Michael Jordan because I'm not six foot seven. I'd never be Anthony Joshua because I'm not a heavyweight. So no matter how much I try, you've got natural skills and natural innate abilities that you'll hone in on. So what I've done when I work with people is I figure out, this is my property delta matrix to figure out what is the right strategy for you. Not for me and my circumstances, what works for you. And this is how you do that. The power of your questions is the power of your results. So first of all, let's start with, you've got four major ingredients to make a business work, not just property business, any business. You've got money, you've got knowledge, you've got network, and in the middle, I should do this in a different color to highlight this because it's really important, you've got time. So what you need to do to figure out what sort of strategy you should be doing is asking yourself the question, if you've got a line here, zero to 10, let's put a line across there. So with money, how much money have you got available? And again, this is macro and micro. If you're in the Northeast and you've got 50K, you might be around here. If you're in London and you've got 50K, you're at zero point F all because you're not gonna be able to buy much with 50K. So think about this with all these as well, like knowledge. Score yourself from zero to 10 with knowledge. Think about your network, zero to 10. Think about your time, which a lot of people don't, because you might be capable, but you might not have the time to implement what you're capable of. This is the biggest entrepreneurial trap I've seen being in business over years. People take on too much. I made this mistake and paid a really harsh penalty on that. But then at the bottom here, I've got courage, confidence, and conviction. How much pressure can you handle? Like you see these success stories of the people that got a HMO and a development on their first deal, but the exception is not the rules. If you are an exception, this is why they help you figure out if you are an exception. If you are the rule, this will figure it out. If you're behind the rule, you need to build up your confidence. This will help you figure that out because if you go after something too large and you don't achieve it, 
it breaks down your confidence. Or if it's too large, it just overwhelms you. The biggest reason people don't get heads is because they don't get started. So when you study someone like James Clear's book, he says the two minute rule is how you get started. Make it so simple. And the more complex it is, so this is how you build a portfolio. This is how I built my portfolio. On the base level here, I've got buy to lets. Cut your teeth on the buy to lets. They're simpler to do. Do a 10 grand refurb before you take on a 100K refurb. Then above the buy to lets, which is your foundation, is your HMOs and your SAs. Much more complex and you need a bit more skill. Can somebody do these as a first time investor? Of course. But again, ask yourself the question, courage, confidence, and conviction. How much pressure and stress can you handle? How much money have you got? Have you got money to navigate the issues with this? Have you got money to maybe get a mentor to hold your hand through this? Not a weekend training course if you're gonna jump up here quicker because the refurbs are more. Have you got the right network for that? Have you got the right builders? You need different architects and different planning consultants, tax consultants as you go further up here. So that's a line between there and SAs. Uh, then you've got commercial conversion and then you've got developments. These are the main strategies of wealth building. This is not including your active income, sourcing rent to rents and trading and flipping. This is building wealth, building an all weather portfolio. So what you have to ask yourself is where are you on this chart? And the higher you up, you might have transferable skills and no buy to lets. You might be a builder, quantity surveyor, or you might just have a ton of courage, confidence and conviction and you're an A player and you can jump up to here or here. But the idea behind this is look, if you over here, build yourself up five to 10 properties, and say you build up 10 properties and they're giving you a couple hundred pound per month. It's not gonna get you financial freedom in a hurry, but what it does is gets you experience, gets you used to working with builders, and it gives you a bit of cash flow that gives you a buffer. So if you've got five, 10 property, or five properties giving you 1K extra per month, that gives you a bit of cash flow. So then when you jump up to this strategy across to here, you will get challenges, especially with HMOs. HMOs typically cost, you need to do the all one suite ones and they're gonna cost you at least around 15k per room to develop that on average that like that can vary that can go slightly lower can go a lot higher as well so if you've got cash flow and you're on bridging products you need better accountants better brokers better understanding better builders it gives you the cash flow to, to, to kind of weather this out especially if you build up 10 of these and you've got like 2k a month instead so then if you buy two or three of these hmos and let's say these hmos give you a, a thousand pound per month and you build up three of these then this gives you a bit more experience doing bigger developments to go up to your commercial conversions which takes a lot more experience a lot more navigation around planning and and bigger refurbs and bigger money again you're going to be at because of the experience you've got banks are going to be more comfortable to lend to you so are private investors and if you documented your journey along the way that's going to make you much more investable to people so look if you've got 2k and 5k and you do commercial conversion and your development finance on the commercial conversion is four grand a month and it goes over like a lot of them do I had a project that went over about six months and I was paying development finance on it, which I was not happy to do, but prepared to do because I knew this could support that. So as you build up, again, if you do a few deals over here, which are uh, commercial conversions, let's say you do two of these and these give you like 2K per month cash flow. And you've got two of these, sorry, I said. So you've got 4K per month. Land development, go and check out Mitch. I'm working with him as a client of mine in my marketing business. And helping him build his profile. He just started development, it took five years, he had to pay a mortgage of around 3K per month for five years to get the planning pass. But if you've got 4K coming in from a couple of commercial conversions and the experience of doing them, you've got your HMOs, you've got 3K coming in from there, and you've got 2K coming in from there, you've got 9K to come in. Then when the extra cost for these diff different things, because you're not experiencing, you might get caught out on something like land, like a soil testing, or you didn't realize a utility in the road had to be dug up. You've got some cash flow coming in to take on these much more rewarding, bigger projects. A lot of people want to dive straight into development straight away because it sounds sexy, but there's much more risk to it. And especially in these sort of markets when rates are going up and downs and things like that. I tried switching this upside down and doing development first deal, and I lost over 10K and about 100 odd grand's worth of opportunity cost from tying up money up at a time. So look, go through this. This will help you figure out what the best strategy is for you. And just to reiterate that, it's all an experience. And the biggest thing you've got to understand is how to manage the refurbishments. So if you want to know how to manage refurbishments better, watch this video here, because we go through a HMO refurbishment there. But listen, if you're still here, make sure you hit that subscribe button. It really does help the channel. And remember, if you don't evolve your ideas, you never live on your own terms. So evolve your ideas, live on your own terms, have an amazing day.